Starting us off at number 10 is Printer's Alley. Back in the 18th century, Printer's Alley got its name for the many publishing companies and printing shops that operated within it. But while it was a straight and narrow place of business by day, at night it transformed into the men's quarters and served a very different crowd, offering men a night away from their wives. It was during this time that the Southern Turf Building was managed by a man named Ice Johnson. But in 1914, when prohibition hit, his once booming business of drinking, gambling, and lodging came to a crashing halt and was forced to close. This sent Johnson into a depressive spiral. And as legend has it, declaring that he would rather die than leave his home, Johnson took his own life in this very alley. Soon after, people began reporting seeing his apparition in the third floor window. And to this day, he remains a popular figure in the alley. Now the Tennessee public publishing company, the ghost of Ice Johnson seeks out to terrify the employees, sometimes with small pranks like moving things from their desks or moving furniture bore their eyes, but if you anger him, he may appear in a full bodied apparition that will send you running for miles. Coming in at number 9 is Tennessee State Prison. Now it probably doesn't come as a huge surprise that a prison is riddled with terrifying entities, however the Tennessee State Prison is in a league of its own. The major reason being is that this correctional facility housed the electric chair for the state, and between 1916 to 1960, 125 prisoners met their fate by electrocution. However, it wasn't just those sentenced to death that are believed to haunt these halls. While the prison was still in operation, it was notorious for overcrowding, riots, and escapees, and it seems that many souls that died here are unable to escape its grave. People that visit often report hearing strange sounds like the clanging of something along the bars or hear footsteps approaching behind them, only to turn around and see that nothing is there. However, nothing is as bone chilling as the screams from the electrocuted inmates that are said to echo throughout the abandoned building loud enough to make your ears ring. Coming in at number 8 is the Opryland Resort. Built in 1977, the Opryland Resort is considered one of Tennessee's most luxurious hotels. However, don't be fooled by the age of the building. It is said to be haunted by a myriad of horrifying entities, the most famous of which is the Lady in Black. One employee in particular had a haunting encounter several years back. He was managing a store that remained open until midnight, which was much later than most establishments. He usually left around 2 a.m. after stocking and getting things ready for the next day, but one particular night, as he was leaving, he saw what appeared to be a blurry woman standing at the top of a staircase dressed in customary Civil War attire. The man knew right away it was the apparition of a spirit, and wanted to remain calm so as not to anger her. But when he went to go speak, she suddenly disappeared right before his very eyes. But that's not the worst of it. Another woman who stayed at the hotel when she was 9 recalls waking up precisely at 3 in the morning every night she was there. And each time she would open her eyes, the lady in black would be standing over her bed watching her sleep. And she wasn't alone. Many other residents claimed to have been woken in the night by a woman whispering in their ear, or by hearing the blood curdling screams of a woman in the night. So if I were you, I might look for a different place to stay. Next up in our number 7 spot is the Two Rivers Mansion. Built back in 1859, this mansion was once a part of a huge 1000 acre plantation. And just like every plantation of the time, it has an extremely dark past. As the legend goes, during the mansion's construction, the remains of nearly 100 indigenous people were found along the property. However, despite realizing they had accidentally begun construction on a burial site, rather than burying the remains elsewhere, they decided to toss them in with the rest of the construction debris. However, as you can imagine, this angered the spirits to great lengths. And and ever since that day, they have haunted all who reside on the property. Staff and visitors alike claim to have witnessed sudden flickering of lights, strange orbs of light, doors mysteriously locking and unlocking on their own, or the sound of loud footsteps when no one else is around them. However, the entity that should really be feared is the Lady in Black, who can be seen gliding around the mansion or running through the acres surrounding the house, terrifying all that come 
face to face with her. Next up at number six is the Pegram County Cemetery. Back in 1970, a group of developers began bulldozing the area along the Harpeth River to build some new housing. However, it wasn't until it was too late that they realized the land they had dug up included the Pegram Family Cemetery. Now completely destroyed, they decided there'd be no harm in selling the dirt from the area, and eventually, over time, it ended up being spread across several of the nearby counties. However, to their shock, once the houses were finished being built a few years later, Harpeth River completely flooded and ruined every last one that resided on the previous cemetery grounds. And it wasn't just a one-time thing. Apparently, ever since, the area floods with alarming regularity, leading many to believe that the developers unwittingly released a curse on the land. But it's not just water that is causing an issue here. Apparently, there have been reported fires that reignite almost immediately after being extinguished. And residents of the area regularly report seeing tombstone apparitions materialize in their backyards. In fact, locals and tourists alike agree that there is often a bad energy in the air, which is often attributed to the angry spirits seeking revenge for their remains being disturbed many years ago. Next up at number five, the Bell Witch Cave. One of the most well-known haunted locations in all of Tennessee, the tales of it being haunted by an evil entity go as far back as the early 1800s and have been very well documented throughout the years. As the story goes, sometime in the late 16th century, there was a huge feud between two neighbors, John Bell and Kate Batts. Now, Kate believed that John had cheated her somehow on a land deal, and so to seek revenge would routinely torture his daughter. This of course made John act out, and the two spent most of their lives trying to get back at one another. In fact, she was so hellbent on revenge that the feud even lasted until her very dying breath. On her deathbed, Kate, who was believed by all in the town to be a witch, allegedly cursed the entire Bell family and promised she would haunt them for the rest of eternity. Ever since that day, a terrifying entity is said to haunt the cave. Even Andrew Jackson, former president who spent a night there once famously said, quote, I would rather face the entire British army than to spend another night with the bell witch. Those that visit the property today say they hear chains rattling or strange knocking sounds, but every single visitor leaves wishing they had never stepped foot inside. Coming in at number four, the Congress Inn. While today the Congress Inn serves as an affordable option for an overnight stay in the city, during the Civil War it was used as a makeshift hospital. However, it's said that as the bodies needing a burial kept growing in numbers, doctors began running out of places to put them, and eventually were left with no other option than to cement the corpses into the walls. However, as it turns out, it is very hard for spirits to leave a property when their corpses are cemented into the walls, and these soldiers are rumored to be very angry about the way their corpses were dealt with. And so, they take it out on the people who stay in the hotel. Visitors who've dared to stay a night claim to hear peculiar whispering from the walls, lights flickering, or loud footsteps in the hall even when they appear empty, as well as gunshots and the sounds of cannons in the night. All of which is terrifying, but whatever you do, stay away from room 102, as that is where the most terrifying apparition is said to reside. One man recounted his stay there, saying he woke in the middle of the night to find he was being pinned down by a horrifying spirit, and was unable to move for what felt like an entire minute. However, as soon as he went to scream for help, the force suddenly lifted and disappeared back into the walls. Needless to say, the man packed his bags and looked for a new place to sleep for the night. And I would suggest the same for you. Next up at number three is the Fairview Plantation. Once the home of cruel and wealthy slave trader Isaac Franklin, it has long been believed that not only is this house haunted by the souls that were here many years ago, but that anyone who resides in its walls will fall under a dark curse too. As legend has it, it all started when Franklin and his wife moved into the Fairview home, and after adding four new members to their family, each and everyone died before they became adults. And it's believed that each of their spirits haunts the grounds to this day. However, the curse didn't end there. Once Franklin passed and his wife remarried, the mansion was vacant for several years, until the Civil War 
for Union soldiers sought it out to be used as a makeshift hospital. However, many are said to have perished within its walls, one of which was said to have written his will in a library book with his own blood. Which just sounds like a recipe for a haunting if you ask me. From there, the property was sold several times, but no one stayed much longer than a few months, as they were inundated with supernatural entities and bad luck. One resident, Charles Reed, a horse breeder, lost 28 of his prize winning horses when a lightning storm set fire to the barn, while others were haunted by Union soldiers crying in agony or covered in blood from brutal battles, or by the young spirits of the Franklin family crying out in the night. So even if ghosts don't scare you much, unless you're looking to fall under a century old curse, I'd steer clear. Coming in at number 2, the Union Station Hotel. One day a woman was having a smoke out on the hotel's old platform, and witnessed a strange woman wandering around in vintage clothing. But right before her eyes, she hopped over the rail and dropped into the tracks. The woman began to scream and cry out, believing she'd just witnessed someone jump to her death. But then, all of a sudden, the woman was gone. Next she saw a man, dressed as a soldier, wandering the platform waiting for someone. But just as the girl had, he disappeared in a flash. Believed to be the ghosts from World War II, as the legend goes, a young woman named Abigail said goodbye to her beloved at this very station before he left for France. Abigail was deeply sad to see him go, but promised that she would wait for him and meet at this very spot once the war ended. Then, after the war, as promised, she went to the station and waited only to find out he had been killed in service. So heartbroken, Abigail threw herself in front of a moving train to end her misery. It's believed that both ghosts are stuck in a loop, and that she takes her life only for him to arrive moments later. But sadly, they always miss each other. However, they aren't the only entities to haunt the hotel's walls. Guests that stay in room 711 often complain of lights flickering or stomping coming from the the roof, despite that they are the top floor of the building. Some even say it sounds like heavy furniture is being dragged in the early hours of the morning. But the most frightening thing is when people are woken in the night by the blood curdling scream of the woman who took her own life. And last up today in our number one spot, the Ryman Auditorium. This auditorium has long been the place of many incredible concerts and shows. However, despite its long standing list of famous performers, it's also believed to be the most cursed building in all of Nashville. The auditorium opened its doors to the public way back in 1892, but it wasn't until around 1943 when rumors of its haunting began to surface. The reason behind the alleged curse of the building Building? Well, between 1943 to 1974, the auditorium became famous for hosting the Grand Old Opry, a radio station turned stage show for up and coming country singers. But tragically, 37 performers died shortly after their performance at the auditorium, some facing their fate in car accidents or fires, while others were believed to be killed. Eventually, the Old Opry found a new home, but still the curse remained, and an alleged other 14 acts died shortly after performing on the cursed stage. But it's not just the curse that should make you nervous to visit this building. It's also said to be haunted by Captain Thomas Ryman, who the building is named after. You see, contrary to his wishes, the space began taking on different kinds of acts, like plays and comedy shows, which has apparently angered the entity over the years, who had always wanted it to be a purely music-based venue. According to some patrons, Ryman's loud footsteps can be heard stomping across the stage when there's a performance he is particularly unfond of. And some have been so freaked out by his apparition that they left the theater entirely, never to return. Starting off at number 10 is the Old Washu Club. What was once a high class bar reserved for the wealthiest men in Virginia City, Nevada, is now one of the most haunted places in the state. You see, as the riches dwindled, so did the clientele that began to roam around. And soon enough, anyone with cash for a beer was welcome inside the saloon. And it didn't take long before the bar became a frequent hotspot visited by Johns looking for a cheap night of fun away from their wives. However, along with the new 
nightlife, the new patrons also brought lots of violence, with bar fights becoming a near nightly incident. The next thing you know, bar fights turned into fights with the working ladies. These women were being killed by the patrons if they wouldn't give them what they wanted. Today, the building is mostly used for commercial properties, but many ghosts have been reported haunting the once wealthy halls, especially the ghost of Lena. Legend has it that Lena was once one of the girls working in the bedrooms back in the day, and tragically she was killed by one of the Johns on the third floor. But she's not the only ghost who roams the halls, as allegedly the man who killed Lena felt such guilt over what he did that he took his own life the very next day on the second floor. To this day, his ghost is seen walking around looking for Lena and sometimes even crying out her name. Next up at number 9, the Clown Motel. There are a few things that rival my fear of dolls, but if there is one thing that comes close, it would probably be clowns. So a motel that's entire theme and brand is that it's filled head to toe with clowns actually sounds like my nightmare. I mean, how do people sleep in a room where creepy clown paintings and figurines stare at them in the dark? I will never understand. But to make matters even worse, it's not just filled with freaky and terrifying clowns. I mean, truly, that would be enough for me. But this place doubles down as a haunted motel as well. Long before the clown-filled motel opened its doors, this corner of town was reserved for the local graveyard. Being the Wild West and all, between the mining incidents and just general dangerous lifestyles, in about 10 years, the cemetery was filled to capacity with 300 corpses. And it seems the spirits of these lost souls like to roam around the nearby hotel, terrifying guests as if clowns weren't getting the job done already. Patrons of the motel today frequently report seeing strange occurrences around the motel, such as hearing strange voices or doors slamming shut seemingly out of nowhere. So unless you are a clown-loving ghost enthusiast with a glutton for punishment, then I would suggest looking for a different place to stay on your visit. Coming in at number 8, the Pioneer Saloon. Opened in 1913, the Pioneer Saloon is the oldest bar in southern Nevada, and oh boy does it have a history. In its heyday, the saloon was no stranger to a bar fight, and as a result, there are quite a few bullet holes lining the walls. But that is not the worst of it. It said American actor Clark Gable frequented this establishment and was here waiting for Carol Lombard the night that a search party went out looking for her after a nearby plane crash. But the most tragic story is that of the bartender, who said to have taken his own life right before a full house of patrons. As a result, many have said that the Pioneer Saloon is home to a whole mess of spirits. Of course, most famously the bartender, but also an entity referred to as Ruby and even the ghost of Carol Lombard herself. Over the years, many paranormal investigators have popped in hoping to snag a recording of a strange noise or catch an unusual sighting on video, and believe it or not, they all claim to have been successful. But it's not not just the experts, patrons of the bar too claim to see doors slam shut or hear gunshots at night. But nothing is as scary as the apparition of the lonely bartender who said to terrify even the most skeptical guests who visit. Coming in at number 7, Yellow Jacket Mine. Widely believed to be the most haunted place across Nevada, this terrifying mine got its claim to fame over 150 years ago. Back in 1869, during the early hours of the morning, a huge fire broke out inside the mine, spreading up to the 800 foot level. Completely unaware, the day crew began their work day descending into the mine, and soon burning timbers started collapsing around them, trapping them inside. Despite firefighters arriving on the Scene, the water pressure wasn't strong enough to extinguish the fire, and so the blaze continued for the next three weeks. Tragically, 39 miners lost their lives inside, but the strange thing is that only 34 bodies were ever recovered. Many over the years have wondered where the remains of the missing miners have gone, but one thing is for sure, all the men's spirits have stayed behind to haunt any who step foot on the property. Today, while you can't enter the mine itself, those that visit the area have reported seeing blue and white orbs floating around the main entrance. But 
Most frightening of all are the screams and cries that can be heard echoing from the tunnels below. Coming in at number six, Zach Baggins Haunted Museum. It may be a popular tourist attraction for Las Vegas visitors, but that doesn't mean it's not also a terrifyingly haunted museum. If you don't already know, Zach Baggins was once one of America's most famous TV ghost hunters and spent years collecting some of the most creepy, evil, and possessed trinkets this world has to offer. So what's an ex-ghost hunter to do with all his haunted memorabilia? Why make a haunted museum, of course. If you dare visit the museum today, you'll find the items encased in glass and behind velvet ropes to keep you from touching them. But that doesn't stop the frightening spirits that haunt them from freaking out the patrons anyways. Inside the museum are 30 rooms, each filled with cursed items and riddled with haunted spirits, such as haunted dolls, a cursed rocking chair that is believed to be the inspiration behind the actual haunting in the movie The Conjuring, and the original Die Book Box. The Die Book Box, for those that are not aware, is believed to be the most haunted object on the planet. The Die Book originates from Jewish folklore and is an evil entity that will possess the living and never leave. And as the legend goes, you are never to open the Die Book Box, otherwise the entity will escape and wreak havoc on anyone in its path. Coming in at number five, the Hoover Dam. This popular tourist destination spanning the Colorado River between Arizona and Nevada is revered as a spectacular feat of engineering. The construction on this behemoth began back in 1931 and it took five years to complete. But make no mistake, the history of this dam is not a squeaky clean slate. In fact, it's said that a whopping 112 people died during its construction and that each and every one one of them haunts the dam to this day. And if that wasn't dark enough, rumor has it that some of the workers who fell to their deaths were actually permanently encased in the dam's concrete. While the concrete may encase their physical bodies, their spirits are said to roam the grounds, terrifying anyone who they come into contact with. Many believe the spirits are angry to have lost their lives to the project and are there to take revenge on those who reap the benefits they never got to. Visitors and staff alike have reported cold spots, flickering electricity, equipment malfunctions, and finding missing items turn up in completely inexplicable places as soon as they are on the property. So just be careful if you ever decide to stop on by, you never know what could happen. Next up at number four, the Overland Hotel and Saloon. Back in the day, the county of Pioche was a near lawless pit filled with danger and bloodshed. Over the years, it's said 72 souls were laid to rest across the county and it's believed they all remain haunting the grounds to this day. Nicknamed Nevada's liveliest go town, Pioche might have a tamer facade during the day, but at night it's just as wild as it was back in the day. But the most terrifying spot of them all is said to be the Overland Hotel and Saloon. Although the Overland that stands today was rebuilt after a tragic fire in 1948, the spirits that haunt the grounds were not not deterred. In fact, some say they even came back with a vengeance. So much so that a few years back, a crew for the TV show Ghost Adventures decided to try their hand and check out the rumors for themselves, and as they tell it, they recorded some of the most successful interactions with spirits at this hotel than anywhere else to date. To be clear, successful for a paranormal investigator pretty much translates to a thing of nightmares for anyone else. To top it off, guests continuously report witnessing shadowy figures lurking in the corners and slamming doors. And some guests even say they've been physically shaken by spirits until they awake. In fact, this place is so haunted that staff say you need to tell them if you want to avoid ghosts, as there are only a few select rooms that the spirits tend to stay away from. That being said, you are never truly safe from their presence. Coming in at number three, the Silver Queen Hotel. Built back in 1876, the Silver Queen is just about the oldest hotel in the state, and not much has changed since the days it opened its doors. Beautifully restored to maintain its 19th century authenticity, it's not just the brass hardware that has stayed since the early days, but 
some of the patrons too. The most famous of which is the ghost of Rosie, believed to be the spirit of a woman of the night who was a frequent and favorite patron of the Silver Queen Hotel in its heyday, but who tragically took her own life in the very hotel she worked in. As the story goes, a few of her clients became violent towards her, and Rosie, depressed and seeing no way out of this life, decided to end it herself in her bathtub of room 11. To this day, it's said room 11 is haunted by her ghost, and those that have stayed there say they routinely hear rattling doorknobs, phantom footsteps, and disembodied voices echo throughout. But she isn't alone. Other frightening ghosts have also made their appearance in the wedding chapel's night cameras, and visitors swear to hear footsteps that sound like clacking along a wooden floor, despite that the hallways are carpeted. I mean, it's just creepy from top to bottom. Next up in our number two spot, the Goldfield Hotel. Although it now stands abandoned and boarded up, back in 1908 it was one of the hottest hotels in town, and it certainly has a spicy legend. As the story goes, back in the day there was a young woman named Elizabeth who caught the eye of owner George Wingfield. George became quite smitten with the lady and frequently swung by her room for a nighttime visit. However, Elizabeth soon fell pregnant and George Concerned for his reputation and business, lured her into room 109 at the hotel under false pretenses. Once inside, he chained Elizabeth to the radiator and forced her to stay in the room alone until she gave birth. But tragically, Elizabeth died in the room, and so George took it upon himself to deal with her. And so George took it upon himself to deal with her situation, allegedly throwing it down a nearby mine shaft. Those who pass by the old hotel today say they can hear the sound of chains clanking against the radiator and that Elizabeth can be seen walking around room 109 wearing a long white dress and weeping. Some even say they have heard her cries echo in the streets. But it's not just the weeping Elizabeth that haunts these evil halls, but the spirit of a former employee who took their life as well as George himself. It's believed George remains there tormenting the poor Elizabeth even in her death, making this place more and more evil as the hours go by. And last up in our number one spot is Circus Circus. Since its opening in 1968, Circus Circus has become one of the most famous hotel and casinos in Las Vegas. Over the years, it has of course been the meeting place of countless guests, but it has also been the location of a multitude of crimes, including multiple brutal killings. Most notorious is the tragic case of a mother and son who were found dead in room 123 in what appeared to be a brutal case of the mother taking his life and then her own. No one knows what led the mother to do such a thing, but it's said the pair frequently wander the hotel, and at night the loud screams are often heard echoing throughout the hall. Most terrifying though are the reports of people who have stayed in the room, as apparently the words help me have appeared on numerous occasions scrawled across the bathroom mirror. But it wasn't just brutal killings among family members that went down in these hallowed halls. Believe it or not, there was also apparently a deep affiliation with the American mobster Anthony John Spilotro, who was put in charge of the gift shop to cover for his illegal business dealings. As you can imagine, with mobsters frequenting the establishment, there was quite a lot of bloodshed going on in the shadows, and so many of the other ghosts are suspected to have been the victims of Spilotro and his men. However, some even believe Spilotro himself, who was brutally killed by his employer, haunts the halls hoping to get revenge on the very people who put him in the grave all those years ago. Starting us off at number 10 is Maple Hill Cemetery. Founded in 1822, this cemetery is the oldest and largest burial ground in the state, where roughly 80,000 people have been laid to rest. But with that many souls in one place, it only takes a matter of time before people start noticing something strange happening. While during the day, you may be spared from witnessing a horrifying spirit, it's said at night, the tortured souls are unearthed earthed, roaming the grounds in search of answers. Most unsettling is the park on the property, also known as the Dead Playground. Oh gee, that sounds inviting, don't you think? Apparently it's nicknamed that as many young people are buried in the area. And 
and visitors brave enough to see for themselves what goes on claim that at night the trapped souls of the young can be seen playing around the park while their creepy giggles echo throughout the grounds. But whatever you do, make sure you pay respect to Mary Bibb. If you knock on her mausoleum walls, she will reply with a gentle creak of her rocking chair buried inside. But if you forget to greet her, well, she just might haunt you forever. Coming in at number 9 is Fort Morgan. Said to be one of the most haunted places in all of Alabama, Fort Morgan is rife with ghoulish tales of ghosts and strange occurrences. The most notorious is that of a prisoner who's said to have died here in the early 1900s after he took his own life in the barracks. People say that if you walk past, you can still hear him crying out late at night. But he's not the only one you should fear. There's also a female spirit that wanders the grounds in search of justice after she too lost her life after being dragged into the fort and beaten to death by mysterious attackers who were never caught for the crime. Many believe she is an angry spirit with a vengeance who will torture any man who steps foot on the property. So if I were you, I'd skip this one. Next up at number 8 is Drish House. Once the home of Dr. John R. Marsh, a gambler and a drunk who built the estate in 1835 for his beloved bride Sarah. The couple lived in the home for 32 years until one day John had too much to drink for the last time and drunkenly tumbled over the stairway falling to his demise. But you might be surprised that it's not his spirit that's trapped here, actually his wife Sarah. While no one knows for sure what keeps her her soul trapped on the property. Some say she was so traumatized after finding her husband dead in their home and wasn't able to recover. Others believe, however, that she refuses to leave because her family failed to honor her own funeral wishes, and so she remains causing trouble to anyone who steps foot on the property to this day. While today the manor is used for many celebrations, Sarah remains tormenting guests of the events, trying to get them to leave. If you're brave enough to visit, try looking up at the third story tower. It says you can catch a glimpse of her up there. Just be careful she doesn't see you looking or she may just follow you around the property terrorizing you until you leave. Next up at number 7, the Old Bryce Hospital. There are few places in this world more haunted than an old abandoned mental health facility and there is no denying that the torment that went on here is a huge reason as to why so many spirits remain haunting its grounds seeking revenge. Built during the segregation era of America, the building was branded as an insane asylum for those suffering from mental illnesses, when in reality, it was pretty much a work camp for able-bodied black people who were admitted under false pretenses and then forced into slave labor, working in the fields around the hospital. Shockingly, the facility remained open until 1977 and only closed due to new desegregation laws. It comes as no surprise that after years of abuse and inhumane living conditions suffered by the so-called patient that people claim to have had strange experiences while visiting. Those who've dared to visit the abandoned hospital claim the souls are angry and that as soon as you walk in, you can feel the air shift. Many report hearing strange noises and some even claim to have seen shadowy figures lurking around every corner. Next up at number 6 is St. James Hotel. For whatever reason, hotels tend to be a pretty big hotspot for paranormal encounters and the St. James Hotel is definitely a part of that phenomenon. Back in the day it was built, it was the first hotel operated by a black congressman. And despite having many years of success, it hit hard times in the late 1800s and was eventually forced to close its doors to the public. Fast forward about 100 years to 1997 and the hotel reopened. But this time something was off about the building. Something just wasn't right. During its century long time as an abandoned building, it became a horrifying hub for lost souls. And I guess they decided to remain haunting all those that dare stay the night. Visitors claim seeing full bodied apparitions sitting at the bar or witness lights shutting off out of nowhere. But most creepy of all was a recorded visit when a psychic research team was brought in and they walked the grounds asking if anyone was there, but they never heard a response back. But later on, when they played the tapes, an older man's voice responded saying, well that's a stupid question, making everyone in the room jump. So 
What do you say? Are you brave enough to pay the ghosts a visit? Coming in at number 5, Cahaba Ghost Town. It likely comes as no surprise that a ghost town is also home to thousands of unsettling spirits. But few are more terrifying than Cahaba. Once the capital city of Alabama, it was abandoned after the Civil War when terrible flooding led to most of the buildings falling into complete disrepair, and so the citizens who survived were forced to leave for good. Today, nothing remains but the ruins of what used to be, including a church, a few cemeteries, and the Barker Mansion and its slave quarters. And I mean, that is just all the ingredients for a haunted ghost town if I've ever heard of one. Those that have tried to visit the once booming city recount that as soon as you enter the town's borders, cell service gets spotty and unreliable, only to be completely fine as soon as you step even one foot off the border of the town. While that alone might not scare visitors away, there are also countless reports of visitors witnessing terrifying apparitions and hearing the voices of the dead crying out at night for revenge. So visit at your own risk, but don't say I didn't warn you. Coming in at number 4 is the Boynton Oak. Of all the things that are usually haunted, like cemeteries, hospitals, churches, the last thing you'd likely expect to need to be afraid of was a tree. But trust me, this is no ordinary tree. The Boynton Oak is said to have grown from the grave of one Mr. Charles Boynton. As the legend goes, back in 1835, Charles was accused of friend Nathaniel Frost. Charles disputed the accusation and never once wavered from his alleged innocence. Still, he was found guilty for the crime and sentenced to execution as payback. But right before he was executed, he declared in front of everyone that a tree would spring forth from his grave as a proof of his innocence, and then they would all see that they had caught the wrong man. And shockingly, this is exactly what happened. Many claim that Charles's spirit haunts the tree above his grave, often freaking out those who come to visit. Even spookier is that some claim to have even seen him sitting under the tree waiting. But just who is he waiting for? No one knows exactly. Coming in at number 3 is Sloss Furnaces. Once built as a means to access iron ore, coal, and limestone, the Sloss Furnaces were far from a safe place to work. It's believed over the years at least 47 men lost their lives working at the furnaces due to the incredibly dangerous work conditions. But the most talked about is that of James Slag Wormwood, a former foreman of the furnaces known for being cruel to his employees and who died after slipping and falling into a pool of molten iron ore. Although there is rumor he may have been pushed by his workers forced to the brink after his unending abuse. Still, after Wormwood's death, strange things started happening more and more frequently. Workers were seeing strange things, hearing strange noises, and started to feel like they were going crazy. Employees were being found injured or seen tripping and falling out of nowhere. Each of them recounted that an angry man covered in burns had tried to push them after screaming at them to get back to work. Then in 1971, a watchman encountered what he described as a half man, half demon who tried to push him up the stairs. After the watchman refused the spirit's advance, he was badly beaten by the entity until he fell unconscious. Later while being examined, he was found to be covered in severe burns where he says he was beaten. So unless you're looking to be beaten up by an angry spirit and covered in burns from the blows. I might suggest a different place for your visit. Coming in at number 2 is Bear Creek Swamp. Even at the best of times, swamps give off spooky and creepy vibes, and this one might just be the worst of them all. Legend has it that many years ago, a woman's son went missing. Scared, the mother went looking for him in the nearby swamp, hoping that he had simply run away from home. But no matter how long she looked, she could never find him. It said she died in the swamp looking for him, and if you walk into the swamp today and say we have your baby three times, she will come out of nowhere and attack you until you leave for good. And don't even try to come back after she's banished you. You might not be so lucky the second time around. And last up today in our number one spot is Sweetwater Mansion. Designed by war vet General John Brahan, this mansion was named after the nearby creek and first occupied by the general's son-in-law, Robert Patton. Under Patton's jurisdiction, the basement of the mansion served as a civil war hospital and a county jail. And if that wasn't enough, it's said that at one point someone who lived in the mansion practiced dark magic, which thinned the veil between worlds. This would make sense considering just how 
how many people have witnessed earth shattering apparitions that sent them running for the hills. Most notably is the casket that contains a body of a confederate soldier in one of the downstairs rooms that will suddenly disappear right in front of your eyes. It's believed that the casket is haunted by the spirit of original owner Robert Patton whose funeral was held at the home and who was documented having an open casket ceremony. But that's not even the scariest part. There's a room on the property that routinely locks female visitors inside. In fact, it happens so frequently that caretakers of the property have avoided entering it at all costs. And if a self locking door and a terrifying soldier ghost don't turn you off of the property, there is also a secret room on the property with no door. The only way to enter is by a small window, and it's believed that anyone who goes in will never escape. So if I were you, I'd skip this one. Starting us off at number 10 is Louisiana Old State Capitol. This neo-gothic cathedral-like castle was built back in 1846 after the Louisiana legislator decided to relocate the capital away from the sinful lifestyle scattered across New Orleans. For many years it housed some of the most esteemed and prestigious lobbyists and lawmakers and although it's no longer used for politics, it is far from empty. Said to be haunted by numerous entities like a security guard and a girl who lived nearby during construction, the most notorious is that of Pierre Cuvion. Once a senator in the capital's prime, it said Pierre dropped dead from a heart attack in the building after a spirited speech about the corruption of politics. Visitors say his ghost still haunts the halls to this day and he can often be heard stomping around the senate floor or playing tricks on the staff. Once while making his nightly rounds, a security guard, an alive one to be clear, not the ghost, said he felt a tap of a cold finger on his shoulder but when he turned around nothing was there but he knew he wasn't imagining it as afterwards it sounded like something or someone was giggling. Most creepy of all is the numerous reports of staff saying they've seen motion detectors go off only to find an empty room upon inspection. So they would go back and check security tapes but nothing had entered or left at the time the sensors were triggered. Coincidence? You tell me. Coming in at number 9, the Woodland Plantation. Owned by notorious pirate and seafarer William Johnson, during its active years it was used as a sugar plantation housing and torturing a multitude of slaves. It likely comes as no surprise that Johnson was not revered as a kind man. Not only did he frequently kill for his job at sea, but he was notoriously cruel to his slaves too. With many reporting he would not bat an eye, executing or beating any who dared question his power or step out of line. Today those brave enough to visit report hearing the cries of the tortured souls echo through the house, as well as lights turning on and off independently, and unexplainable bursts of cold air even in the blistering heat of summer. Most terrifying though is those that have witnessed the ghost of Pierre Lafleur, a man who briefly lived at the house after its days as a plantation, who after running out of money took to the chandelier in the living room and tragically ended his life. I will not be taking my chances with that one. Next up at number 8 is the USS Kid. Maybe I just watched too much Pirates of the Caribbean as a kid, but there is something extra scary about a haunted ship. During World War II, this boat was a destroyer ship for the US Navy, named after Admiral Isaac Kidd. Kidd tragically lost his life to the attack on Pearl Harbor, but surprisingly this isn't where the boat gets its ghost story from. On April 11th, 1945, a Japanese plane committed a attack plummeting into the boat killing 38 sailors and leaving 55 others badly wounded. Today it's no longer used as a warship but remains docked in the Baton Rouge as a war memorial and all that enter say they've felt spirits of the sailors who lost their lives inside. Visitors claim to see full bodied apparitions of the spirits decked out in their war uniforms as well as ghostly arms and legs creepily floating around looking as if they were brutally ripped from the rest of the body. But whatever you do just stay away from the sleeping quarters, as that's where things get even worse. Those that have ventured down say the blood curdling screams of the soldiers can be heard bouncing off the walls, and some even say they've been pushed or grabbed by the tortured souls right up until they step foot off the ship. Coming in at number 7 is Chrétien Point. First run by Hippolyte Chrétien, a French colonist, Chrétien accrued a massive wealth operating his cotton plantation off the backs of slaves. 
waves. On top of that, Chrétien also had some less than friendly friends, one of which was the famed pirate Jean Lafitte. One day, Chrétien's son, Hippolyte II, fell in love with the neighbor girl Felicity Nada. She was a fiery, passionate, and independent Spanish woman, and despite pushback from his father, Hippolyte married Felicity and the pair remained happily together. Once his father died, Hippolyte took over the family business, but sadly, he died of yellow fever shortly after in 1839, leaving Felicity to keep things running. She took pride in this position and accrued even more wealth than her father in law or husband ever had, eventually, even becoming friends with the pirate Jean Lafitte herself, just as her father in law had. But after Lafitte's death, his crew thought they could pull the wool over Felicity's eyes and steal from her beloved home. But they were no match for the widow. Upon the break in, she shot a pistol right between the eyebrows of one of the pirates, sending the rest running for their lives. Eventually, Felicity died, but eternally devoted to her plantation, her spirit has never left. Visitors say you can still hear the deadly gunshot clear as day in the hall, as well as the sound of bodies tumbling down the stairs. Just be careful if you do decide to visit. Felicity does not always take kindly to visitors. Next up at number six is Labo Mansion. Once the plantation of a wealthy businessman in 1846, in 1905, the property was sold and converted into a hotel and casino. Now, at the time, gambling was outlawed in New Orleans, but it became quite the popular hang spot during Prohibition. While patrons were likely pulled in by the promise of booze and gambling, it didn't take long before they realized the building was haunted by dozens of spirits. Partygoers often complained their watches immediately stopped working the minute they stepped foot on the property, only to magically be good as new once they left. Many claimed to hear strange noises echo through the halls, and others nearly fainted seeing the woman in white who sat on the upstairs porch. Then in 2013, a group of so-called paranormal investigators that by the sound of it were more like a group of drunken idiots, snuck onto the property looking to catch one of the many rumors entities said to haunt the historic halls, but having no real clue what they were doing, decided to light fire on the building in an attempt to provoke the spirits to show themselves. Sadly, all they did was burn it down. However, the fire was no match for the spirits. Even without the walls to hold them in, all the entities remain haunting the property. Those that walk by say their watches still stop working the minute they step foot on the property, and sometimes at night you can hear the cries of the terror terrifying woman in white. Next up at number 5 is Lloyd Hall Plantation. After leaving his London family for a new life in America, William Lloyd built his plantation in 1820. It's rumored that Lloyd was actually exiled from his family's insurance dynasty, hence his sudden move to America, but no one actually knows for sure. Like all plantations of the time, it was a cruel and brutal place for the slaves, but the owner was swimming in money and profit. That was, however, until the Civil War. War, when it was discovered that Lloyd was working as a double spy for both the Union and Confederacy. Once word got out, Union soldiers stormed his house and tarred and feathered him before he was hanged for his disloyalty. It said Lloyd now haunts the house along with the many slaves that died while under his care. But that's not all. Others reported a Union soldier named Harry who was shot while hiding in the attic, as well as Lloyd's niece who after being left at the altar jumped out the second story window to her death. Those brave enough to step on the property claim to hear piano and violins despite no one playing, ringing doorbells when no one is outside, and see furniture moving around all on its own. Some say that if you listen carefully, you can still hear the screams of William Lloyd echo across the property. Coming in at number 4, Huma's House. By this point, I am sure you have put together that there were a lot of plantations in Louisiana during the early 1800s. Among that list is Huma's House. Said to be haunted by countless spirits of tortured souls from its time as a plantation, the ghosts that live here are sure to send you running for the hills. Among them are 16 souls said to be trapped inside oak trees across the property. All the souls trapped inside lost their lives during a dangerous construction project gone wrong. The trees were a cherished entity to 
into the house. But workers cut down many of the historic oak trees before sending them down the river to be milled. There were 16 profiteers set off aboard the backs of the big tree trunks, but somehow their bodies never recovered. It's said they remained trapped inside the trees as punishment, stuck on the property they tried to cheat. Among the haunted trees is a mysterious girl in a blue dress, often seen staring at visitors while she remains perched at the top of a staircase, but in the blink of an eye she'll disappear into thin air. And if a creepy girl apparition and Harry Potter trees don't scare you, then just wait until you feel the hand of a cold spirit grab your shoulder. You will never want to return as long as you live. Coming in at number 3, Taylor Town Tower. Once a booming church amongst the community, shortly after its opening in 1906, membership began declining at a rapid rate, and soon the church became abandoned and used for hay storage for the nearby farmers. But how did it go from a church into a bell tower? Well, as the legend goes, a local plantation owner's daughter was engaged to be married. But on the day of her wedding, the groom couldn't go through with it and disappeared without a trace. The bride was absolutely devastated, and in a fit of depression ran to the nearby abandoned tower to end her suffering. It said the bride jumped from the top of the tower to her death, and her father was so distraught when he happened upon her body that he burned the church down. In a cruel twist of fate, all that survived the flames was the very tower she had jumped from, taunting him until his dying day. Locals say that when there is a full moon, the bride can be seen wandering the land looking for her loved one, screaming and crying out after him. Next up at number 2 is the Bourbon Orleans Hotel. Back in the day, the Bourbon was a highly frequented theater and ballroom where wealthy Creole men could sneak away from their wives to secretly engage in erotic nighttime affairs. But all the fun came to a screeching halt in 1816 when a fire took out most of the building. Fast forward to 1881 and the building was put up for sale and purchased by a community of nuns. But after a brutal yellow fever epidemic struck Louisiana, many nuns and orphans lives were lost, and that is where the ghost stories begin. Today the building operates as one of New Orleans most luxurious hotels, but make no mistake, it is haunted by at least 20 different terrifying spirits. Guests have reported the sounds of laughter in the halls when no one was around, and some swear to have seen young people lying in beds with mists of black fog hanging over them. But most terrifying is the ghost who resides in room 644. Rumor has it that during its time as a monastery, a nun took her own life in this very room. Those that have stayed reported hearing blood curdling screams from the room at all hours of the day, and any guests brave enough to sleep the night were awoken by the nun staring at them over the bed. So if you're looking to be haunted by a creepy nun on your vacation, be my guest, but I'll be looking for different accommodation. And last up today in our number one spot is La Pavillon Hotel. Just minutes away from the notorious French Quarter lies the luxurious Pavilion Hotel. But despite its lavish exterior, it is believed to be the home to over 100 spirits. And some paranormal investigators even believe the building sits on top of a portal to the other side. An interesting theory, considering the building's less than ideal history. Although today the area is a tourist hotspot, back in the 19th century, the ground where La Pavilion sits was deemed completely inhospitable and incredibly dangerous. It was the frequent spot for foul deeds and late night killings, which is likely why so many spirits reside in the hotel's four walls. Among the most talked about are a couple seen dressed in beautiful clothing roaming around with googly eyes. The couple will enter an elevator, but then it never goes anywhere. Instead, the usual ping sound rings loudly and the doors open up again, revealing no one inside. Many also claim to have witnessed a young woman on the ninth floor reported to have died on the steps of the hotel. But the truly terrifying entity only reveals herself at night. One guest staying on the most notoriously haunted ninth floor said that in the middle of the night he was woken by a woman dressed in all black sitting at the foot of his bed. He was speechless and terrified and went to scream, but the entity leaned in, ran her icy cold fingers through his hair, and said, quote, You belong to me. I'll never let you go. Needless to say, he never returned, and I do not blame him. If I ever saw that lady in my room, I would be running as fast as I could. Kicking off our list at number 10, 
room 206. This gives me Stephen King 1408 vibes, and I'm not sure that you're ready. Next time you visit Florida, make sure you read every customer review before you check into a hotel, because some of them might be full of ghosts. That might be a thing that you just might have to deal with. Room 206 at the Super on International Drive. Apparently, it's super haunted. Guests have reported the bed shaking in the middle of the night, probably terrible for your sleep, or freezing cold air even though the AC is turned off. And worst of all, guests have seen their bed look as though somebody was sleeping there moments before, even though it was perfectly made right before they checked in. Can ghosts squat? Is that legal? We've got a couple of spirit squatters in our room. Gotta move. Number nine, Disney on ice. Many families love to visit Orlando at this time of year. The theme parks there are spectacular, especially Disney World. I went once when I was younger, but you know, I don't recall ever seeing a real life Walt Disney. I don't know, maybe it has something to do with the fact that he died in 1966. Who knows? But never say never. One of Orlando's oldest tales is that Walt Disney had his body cryogenically frozen after his death. And right now, apparently, it's being stored in a bunker underneath the theme park. I mean, that's a bit more creative than being cremated. I'll give him that. It's pretty Walt Disney of him just to freeze himself forever. A grad from the University of Central Florida Film School, Benjamin Lancaster, they actually made a film about this whole idea. It's called The Further Adventures of Walt's Frozen Head. That's a, that's a family classic, some would say. Number eight, Scarlett O'Hara's. You're going to need two pieces of ID for this next one, all right? Perhaps the most haunted bar in Florida, located in St. Augustine, Scarlett O'Hara's is haunted by a past owner. Many believe that spirit likes to make itself known to guests. That's always fun, try and go grab a pint and now you got a ghoul in front of you. That spirit is one of George Coley. Now George sadly bit the bullet one night when he was in his bathtub, so now we have a series of unexplainable events. Plates and glasses will sometimes move across the bar on their own and the jukebox keeps playing Help Me Rhonda even when it's unplugged. So that's absolutely terrifying. If you want to check it out now, be warned, because it's a full-on tourist attraction at this point. But if you go, you can pose alongside the same bathtub that George Colley died in. Yeah, how lovely is that? Are we going to Disney World? Nah, even better, Scarlett O'Hara's. Yeah, you're gonna love it. Number seven, Stranahan House. You don't want to be stranded at the Stranahan House. It's gonna be bad news. Fort Lauderdale has a few haunted hidden gems and the oldest house just happens to be the most haunted. What do you know, what odds are that? What odds are that? What are those odds? There we go. The house's OG owner was Frank Stranahan and today if you visit ye old stomping grounds, well, you might catch Frank in a photo or two. It's said that Frank still oversees the place and he regularly shows up in guests' photos. So this ghost likes to photo bomb. That's pretty amazing, I kinda like that. I suppose being trapped in the same house for all of eternity it probably gets a little boring from time to time. Just to pop into a photo, throw some peace signs up, and then disappear back into the walls. Ivy Stranahan, Frank's late wife, she also has made an appearance or two. Nice, true love is haunting the same house forever. Guests have felt a cold hand on their shoulder, and her perfume still lingers in the hallway. Must have been some good strong stuff, nice. Now it's not all fun and games. Augustus Stranahan, AKA Frank's father, well, his ghost likes to throw books. It's really aggressive, so heads up for that, I guess, if you go. Cheers. Number six, the Plaza Resort and Spa. Ah, yes, kick back and relax with ghosts. It's just what you want. You're never alone, I guess, that's a plus side. The Plaza Resort and Spa sounds like a relaxing getaway until you start looking up footage of the actual resort. One's gonna, one's gonna get your attention for sure. Back in August 2013, security cameras captured late night footage of this shape-shifting ghost, some sort of spirit, some scary blob. It's bad news, really, in any regard. What happened was the original building was destroyed by fire in 1909, and current staff will testify that they've seen the ghosts of victims caught in that blaze. How they know? I have no idea, but apparently they do. No, it's a lot of details for one ghost appearance. One of the most common sightings includes a woman whose spirit is known to mess with the elevators and make items in the kitchen disappear. Okay, really? That, that last one's for sure an employee stealing food. He's like, oh yeah, I don't know. I think a ghost ate that cheesecake, boss. I don't know, spooky stuff, spooky. Number five, the Blue Anchor Pub. Another bar, another haunted bill to pay. Here we go, debit or credit. Heading over to Delray Beach, the Blue Anchor Pub was built in 1840s in London, but the wooden interior was sent to New York City and then later on sent to Florida in 1996. So yeah, these spirits must be confused. They go from Jack the Ripper to some dude wearing a Yankees hat talking 
to a TV. Trapped in the wooden interior is the ghost of one Bertha Starkey, who was sadly killed by her husband back in the 1840s. Now you know Bertha is lurking about when you hear rattling pots in the kitchen, and sometimes, sometimes if you're really unlucky, you'll hear wailing in the middle of the night. Nice. Again, horrible sleep at this place. The blue anchor sounds like a really relaxing time, but every night at 10 o'clock the current owners will blast the ship horn to scare away her spirit. I don't know, I feel like blaring a ship horn at 10 p.m. is more jarring than some pots and pans moving sometimes. Know what I mean? I'd rather hear the pots and pans than in the middle of the night. No way. Number four, the Biltmore Hotel. Another hotel to avoid at all costs. Awesome. We love these ones. First of all, do you actually like staying at a hotel? Some people love it. Some people find it super relaxing. I can't help but think about what went on in the bed before me. You know what I mean? Like, you're like, eh, why does this part of the bed feel a little bit caved in? What's going on here? Every time I'm in a hotel, I have the worst dreams and I can't sleep at all. The Biltmore Hotel in the city of Coral Gables is also one of the most haunted hotels in Florida. You've probably heard of this at some point. It all started in 1926 during initial construction. The Biltmore witnessed a foul killing on the 13th floor. The 13th floor of all floors, my god. The Biltmore was also turned into a military hotel during World War II before ultimately being closed and then abandoned later in 1968. Now, the city renovated the hotel later on in the 80s, but it didn't take long for ghost stories to start to spread. It's horrible, horrible past. I mean, more than fair. Now, of course, the most activity is on the 13th floor, so if you do check this one out, really double down. Go to the haunted floor, you know? Don't just look outside and then book. Go in, stay a night. I can't believe some buildings don't have a 13th floor. Can you imagine that? Well, they do, but everyone pretends that they don't. You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, it's 12. I don't know, we'll see. Are you a 13th floor believer? Comment down below. Me personally, I don't think so. Cause it's the 14th or the 12th or the 13th. I don't know anymore. No one knows anymore. It goes 11, 12, 14. You're like, really? What's the 14s? We know what's going on here, come on. Number three. Tampa Theater. If you're a fellow theater kid, you're also gonna love this one. Here we go. Tampa Theater opened up in 1926. The theater is now said, of course, to be haunted by a woman that was struck and killed by a carriage on the property. Imagine being hit by a carriage. It's so slow. This was actually before the theater was built, so her spirit has been there for a while. If you go to Tampa Theater today, you might catch a glimpse of that woman in a white gown walking across the mezzanine hallway. This time, without carriages whipping through, hopefully, sans carriage. Imagine telling somebody in in front of you to sit down during a show and they just disappear. And you're like, I think that was a ghost. I think that was probably a ghost. It says on the playbill, ghost. So maybe that was her. Tampa Theater, of course, has leaned into these claims. Now they offer Ghosts of Tampa Theater Tour where guests can learn about its haunted history. I'd love to do this tour. I don't know. Maybe I'll go to Florida. Who knows? I won't. I'm like, I'm probably not going to. Number two, Key West Cemetery. A cemetery that's haunted Get out of town. You don't say. The Beachside Cemetery was built in 1847. Now, it was built specifically for victims of a hurricane that occurred a year prior in 1846. That's terrible. Now, the cemetery is the final resting place for roughly 80,000 to 100,000 people. So, yeah, I can only assume there's a ghost or two hanging out. That's extremely tragic. Walking through a graveyard at night is scary enough anytime, but Key West Cemetery is so specific that the entire time you're walking through, you feel connected in a way. Now me, personally, I'm all set. I don't want to feel connected to an 1846 tragedy. I'm all set. I'll go the long way around the cemetery and then I'll meet you on the other side, if anything. But if you're into this kind of thing, they also offer ghost tours, so knock yourself out. There you go. Apparently it's too scary for children, so that's a plus. Lines will be a little, little shorter than usual. And finally, number one, St. Augustine Lighthouse. A scary lighthouse? How? How is that possible? The St. Augustine Lighthouse is located, of course, in Florida and was built between 1871 and 1874. And it's considered Florida's first official lighthouse ever. Imagine that. Boom, let there be light. Hey, I made you a lighthouse. Enjoy. We're all good now. There have been several tragic events over the following years, seeing as it's the first lighthouse ever. Seen a lot of history. But even during initial construction, there were several freak accidents on site. Today, said spirits are still lurking about. Sightings of shadowy figures are common, but one time, just one time, somebody saw a hand coming through the tower door. Yeah, a floaty hand, like from idle hands. How terrifying is that? Can you imagine just a Smash Bros hand just lurking near you? Several guests have reported furniture also moving around on its own, which is definitely a hazard. And one person even said that they had some of their arm hairs plucked off of them while they were in the basement. Probably that floaty weird hand just 
Give me one of those. Another guest felt someone grab their ankle at one point while walking down a hallway, which actually caused them to trip and fall down. So something's going on. I don't know what this ghost hand wants, but it's pretty chaotic to me, it seems. I think the ghost hand wants you to click like if you like this video. I think that's what it wants, really. Starting us off at number 10, the Old Red Field Road. Said to be extremely active with spirits, keep your eyes peeled if you ever find yourself driving down this road. Those that try find that they're flashlights and radios suddenly stop working, and some even say their cars begin acting up as soon as they start to approach. One driver in fact said that the hood of their car flew open on site, and when they went to go and check it out, there was no explanation for why it would have done that. Visitors claim that countless ghosts roam the road walking up and down, likely coming from the nearby cemetery, and that they feel a sense of deep unsettling anxiety until they turn off off the old Redfield Road. So maybe if you do visit, just find an alternate route. Next up at number nine, Cotter Bridge. Located in a small town of less than 900 people, during the day the bridge is a world-renowned hotspot for trout fishing, visited by residents and tourists alike. But things take a turn after the sun goes down and locals say that this bridge is haunted by some truly terrifying spirits. Residents say that at night you can hear the cries of an infant coming from the bridge and the sounds of young people playing for hours and hours. But most haunting of all, is the woman who can be seen sprinting from vicious hounds. No one knows who she is or why she's being chased, but the fear of her screaming voice has scared residents from ever daring to get too close. Coming in at number eight, Fort Smith Courthouse. During the late 19th century, Fort Smith was the site of many sentenced to be hanged. In fact, it was rather notorious for it as the presiding judge at the time, named Isaac C. Parker, got the nickname The Hanging Judge from sentencing a whopping 160 people to their death, 79 of which received the punishment. The hangings happened outside the courthouse in the gallows, perhaps as a warning sign for all to see what happened to criminals and it's believed the condemned men of the jail still roam the grounds seeking revenge on Isaac Parker. Many today say they've had frightening experiences while at the courthouse, especially in the gallows. Visitors claim to have heard gavels banging, seen ropes swinging when there was no wind, and one groundskeeper even claims to have spoken with the ghost of Isaac Parker himself. Next up at number seven, the Clayton House. Originally built in the 1800s as a Civil War hospital, it wasn't until 1882 when William Clayton moved his family into the now historical home. The family seemed to have a fairly happy life in their home, but I guess with roots as a hospital, ghosts flock to it and continue to haunt it to this day. The former director of the site, Martha, says that as soon as she started working there, she knew something was off. Doors would slam in the middle of of the night, she would hear footsteps from down the hall when no one was there, and one room on the second floor would always sound like music was playing from inside. Then in 2008, a carpenter who was doing some repairs on the building took pictures to keep track of the progress, but when those photos got developed, he saw a woman dressed in brown lurking in the back of one of his photos, and he wasn't the only one to claim to have seen her lurking in the corners. After a while, Clayton's house had had kind of a reputation, and so paranormal investigators started visiting. And using EVPs, they got recordings of a man shouting obscenities at someone named Anna, which piqued their interest as one of Clayton's daughters was named Anne. But maybe most terrifying was one woman who says that she was standing by herself in the hotel when her hair was tugged hard. She turned around to see who had snuck up on her, assuming it was a prank, but no one was around and she was all alone. Next up at number six, the Toltec Mounds. A hiking trail might not be the first place you'd expect to be terrifyingly haunted, but it makes much more sense once you know that it leads through the remains of an ancient civilization. More 
are officially referred to as the Plum Bayou Mounds, there were once home to a large group of people beginning around 600 AD. But what no one has been able to figure out since is their sudden and mysterious disappearance in 1050 AD. It's thought that the mounds were used for a variety of different purposes, but we know for sure that at least one was a burial ground, and as you can imagine, that is where most of the ghost sightings have occurred. Visitors who pass through the trail say they've seen strange apparitions of what looked like ancient people, along with mysterious orbs of light popping out of nowhere. And some say that if you walk by at night, you'll hear foot stomps of the ancient civilization that will send you running as far away as you can. Coming in at number 5, the Basin Park Hotel. This hotel has long been the site of many paranormal sightings, although no one knows exactly why so many ghosts conjugate in this building. One belief is because the hotel possesses magical abilities due to the famous spring waters that it's built beside. During the 1800s, the indigenous people of the area talked about their holy springs, and it led many to believe that Eureka Springs had healing powers that could cure ailments and crippling conditions. Maybe these holy waters are what make the spirits more visible to the human eye today. Most famously in room 307 lies the ghost of a cowboy who's been known to taunt the guests who stay there, waking them up in the middle of the night. Other entities that visitors claim to have witnessed are the young, translucent woman with steel blue eyes and cotton candy blonde hair, as well as a girl who runs around in pigtails and a yellow dress. Those that stay say they often see various orbs of light appearing around the grounds as if out of nowhere, and that objects will move all on their own very frequently. So if I were you, I'd just find a different hotel to stay at on your visit. Coming in at number 4, The King Opera House. While it's safe to assume you'd expect some kind of drama at the opera, usually it's left to the actors on stage. Said to be haunted by the ghost of a young actor named Charles Tolson, many believe they've seen the famous man roam the halls where he had his last performance ever. As the story goes, Tolson was a talented young man and owner of a traveling actors company that happened to be performing at the King Opera House for a week at the end of September in 1903. Tolson caught the eye of a young woman named Allie Parchman who was just 17 but bored to death by her town and looking for adventure. But Allie's father got word that she intended to leave town with the young man and elope and this made him furious. Her father ran ran down to the opera house to confront Tolson and kill him. When he arrived, he shot him three times, and although Tolson didn't die then, his life was over by the next day while in the hospital. Visitors of the opera house say they feel a strange sensation when they enter, like they're being watched constantly, and some even claim to have witnessed him lurking the halls in his Victorian cape and top hat. Next up at number 3, the Crescent Hotel and Spa. Not only is this Victorian beauty believed to be one of the most haunted places in Arkansas, but some have even said it might be one of the most haunted places in all of America. Before its time as a haunted hotel, it was a hospital run by a crooked doctor who fooled his cancer patients into thinking that there was a cure. So as you can imagine, it's riddled with spirits with a vengeance. Over the years, countless guests and staff have come forward telling their tales, claiming to have heard strange sensations, slamming doors, abrupt waking in the middle of the night, and even seeing full-bodied apparitions while staying in room 218. It is believed that the room is haunted by the ghost of Michael, who was a builder for the hotel that fell off the roof to his death back in 1885 and landed right in front of where room 218 sits. Others claim they've seen a middle-aged man with a white mustache sitting at the bar who vanishes out of sight. And in 1987, a guest said they saw a nurse pushing a gurney down the hallway in the middle of the night. But maybe most terrifying of all is room 202, where allegedly someone managed to photograph a ghost and prove its existence. Coming in at number 2, the Peel Mansion. Back in 1875, this mansion was built by a man named Samuel Peel. He was a US congressman and he lived in the home with his daughter Minnie. Both Peel and Minnie are said to haunt the house today, roaming the halls dressed in white, and often Minnie will play the piano if no one is in the room. But 
despite being the people the mansion is named after, they might not be the creepiest ghosts to haunt its halls. After the Peel family sold the mansion, a couple named Mr. and Mrs. English moved in with their family. One of their daughters, Marjorie, however, became very ill, and after discovering that she'd suffered from a burst appendix, a surgeon informed the family that she was not going to make it. After 10 days, Marjorie died and they covered her body in a sheet. But creepily, only a few hours after being pronounced dead, someone saw the sheet move. Marjorie was alive and went on to live for many more healthy years. But this troubled some of the staff on the farm who believed that her spirit hadn't gotten back into her body and was somehow trapped under that sheet that others had seen moving. Years went by and Marjorie went back to her childhood home only to find that the room where people thought she had died was closed off. When she asked why, she was told it was haunted by a little girl. But the question was, is it Minnie or somehow the lost spirit from Marjorie's almost death? And last up in our number one spot, Highway 365. The legend began back in 1973, when a man picked up a girl on a bridge in the night. She was covered in bruises and cuts and looked very scared. She told the man that she had been in a car accident and asked if he could drive her home. The man complied and when they got to the house she said was hers, she suddenly vanished from his car. Too stunned to realize what he'd just witnessed, the man went up to the door of the house anyway. The door was answered by the girl's father, who who said that she had just died on that very bridge last month. But he wasn't the only one to see the girl in white as she became known. The next year, a different man picked up a young woman on a bridge and drove her home. When they arrived, she asked if he could knock on the door since the house was dark. But when the door opened, the girl was gone and the mother explained that her daughter had died one year earlier that same night. Finally, another year went by and another man picked up the same girl dressed in white near a bridge in the rain. He offered her his coat to keep her warm and when they got to her house, she vanished along with his coat. After talking with the dead girl's parent, who said she visits every year on the anniversary of her death, he went to visit the girl's headstone only to find his missing coat draped across it. Mm -hmm. 